Hello everybody, this is going to be the chapter 3 review where we're going to work on position time, velocity time, and acceleration time plotting. The first thing I want to do is I want to remind you that we can always travel from one graph to the next using a couple tricks. The first thing you need to remember is that if I want to travel what I call down the waterfall or from a position time to a velocity time or from a velocity time to an acceleration time I'm going to look at the slope. Traveling upwards means I need to look at the area under the curve. These two tricks are going to allow us to characterize our graph, so let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to start with something that's at a constant acceleration. I'm going to give a constant positive acceleration. And I'm going to keep the math relatively easy, so we're going to have that value be 2. My units, of course, are going to be meters per second squared. And for all of these graphs, we're going to let each of these tick marks on the horizontal axis, on the time axis, represent one second. As we can see from this information over here, if I want to move from this acceleration time plot and see what the velocity time plot is going to look like, I need to do the area under the curve. Remember that area is actually always defined by my line that I'm looking at and the axis. And so in that case, this is the area that I'm referring to. That's the area under the curve. If I look at this and do some quick multiplication, a height of 2 meters per second squared multiplied by, we're going to say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds out. 5 seconds. I have seconds canceling with one of those seconds, and you can see that I am at 10 meters per second. Remember that when you're going uphill like this, you need to be told where to start. So for this particular plot, I'm going to say that we're starting at negative 4 meters per second. I need to change my velocity by positive 10 meters per second. That means that I'm going to go through this point here, and I'm going to be at a positive 6. So I went from negative 4 up 10. That leads me to positive 6 meters per second. It does that at a constant rate, so that's going to be defined by a straight line. I can take this one step further and I can look at what my position versus time plot is going to look like. Again, I need to be told where to start, and I'm going to say that we start at negative 2. I just picked that number arbitrarily. I'm going to come back to my velocity time graph and I'm going to look at the area under the curve. Again, reminding you that the area under the curve is actually just in between my line and the axes, and so that's the area I'm interested in. And over on this side, this is the area I'm interested in. Because of the way that I selected these numbers, I can tell you that this line on the velocity time actually travels through this point, which is 2 comma 0. That's going to be useful to us to figure out the areas of those triangles. If I first look at the area of this triangle here, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. I have a base of 2, and I have a height of negative 4, or at least that's how far it goes down for the maximum point of that triangle. So my 2's are going to cancel, and I have an area of negative 4. What that tells me is that I need to change my location by negative 4 between this time and this time. So that's going to take me from my negative 2 that I said I was starting at, and that's going to put me at negative 6 by the time I get out to 2 seconds. I'll remind you that that's not going to be a straight line, so I would actually hold off on putting my curve through that, but it's going to be a parabola. Now I'm going to go and look at this other triangle, this larger one. In this case, my area is going to be 1 half, the base is 3, and my height is positive 6. That's going to equal 9 meters if I had included all of my units. So I need to go up 9 meters over the course of 3 seconds. So 1, 2, 3 seconds, and I started at negative 6. That's going to put me up here, which is going to be at positive 3 in between those two tick marks. Now I have 3 different dots here that are defining my curve. It's going to be a parabola that opens upwards. So it's going to look something like this. 
Let's do one more of these for practice. This time I'm going to show some different units, mostly just to remind you that we don't always have to be in meters per second for this to work. I'm going to do my position in kilometers. My velocity is going to be kilometers per hour. And my acceleration down there technically would be kilometers per hour squared, although that's certainly not a set of units that we're very accustomed to using. For this plot, I think I'm going to do something that has two different segments. I've identified the center of the velocity time curve for us. It's going to start at positive 10 kilometers per hour. It's going to travel down and it's going to go through uh, negative 10 kilometers per hour and then this object is going to stay at that velocity for the remainder of the time which is going to be uh, six hours. So let's go ahead and plot out both of our other plots from here. Remember that if I want to move down I need to look at the slope of a line. So I'm going to look at the slope as the rise over the run and in this particular case my final minus initial is going to be negative 10 minus my initial is positive 10 divided by my run the final is 4 hours minus my initial location of 0. A different way to look at the same thing is that I'm going to drop down negative 20 over the course of 4 hours which means that my slope is going to be negative 5 kilometers per hour for that first segment. That means I can go down here and I can map the acceleration out all the way out until 4 hours at its value of negative 5. I don't have much room to write that in here but let's see if I can squeeze it in. Negative 5 is where that starting right there. Then I can see within this segment I have a slope of 0. As you know, a slope of zero means that the object is not accelerating, if I'm looking at a graph like that. So it's going to maintain its velocity of negative 10 kilometers per hour. But again, all I really need to do is I need to look at that slope, which means that I'm going to be right on top of the axis here. And so that's intended to be a zero. If I wanted to put this little vertical line, I can. It's usually used just to guide the eye but my acceleration time plot is done. So I start at negative 5, I do that for 4 hours, and then I go up and I have an acceleration of 0 for the remaining 2 hours. Now I need to look at the area under the curve. So in this, the base is going to be 2, and then I have a height of 10, and again it's a triangle, so it's 1 half base times height. I'm looking at this area in here. So 2 times 1 half, those will cancel times 10. This is going to be an area of positive 10. Then perhaps I will look at just this area is going to be negative 10 times a width of 2, but again the 1 half is going to take this to a negative 10 for its area. Then I have a full rectangle which is negative 10 times 2 and the area inside of here is negative 20. I have to be told where to start on my position time plot. I'm going to just this time pick the origin for our location and I know after two seconds has passed I need to be plus 10 meters from my original location which means that I'll put it right here that'll be my positive 10 plus 10. Again I would refrain from putting your line in until you've really discovered what the shape of the curve is going to look like looks like if I go out two additional seconds out to a total of four seconds I'm going to drop back down to the origin because I have to go down 10 and then if I look at this last phase it's going to travel at a constant velocity and I have to drop down negative 20 and so in the remaining two seconds I'm going to drop down to here and that's going to be at negative 20 where that location up above is negative 10. Now if I go in and I draw my lines, I have to be a little bit careful here. The region where I have acceleration generates a parabola. So that means I'm going to go up, I'm going to come back down, and then that's actually where my parabola ends. Because this region here is defined by a constant velocity. A constant velocity relates to a constantly changing position or just a straight line. So from this location four seconds out that's supposed to be a straight line there. So this is 
linear from here to here. This is proportional to a parabola here, whereas this is just 2x. I hope that's helped remind you how to graphically look at position time, velocity time, and acceleration time plots. You can absolutely look through a different video to see some sample calculations that we did in Chapter 3. As usual, if you think you have it figured out, let your computer know.